Hey everyone, Sam from Professional Music Technology here. And in today's video, we're taking a look at five of our favorite types of short scale bass guitars. Now, if you didn't already know, the scale length of a guitar is the distance between the saddles down on the bridge and the nut up at the headstock, with the standard scale for a bass being 34 inches. The basses we'll be looking at today, however, all feature a shorter scale length of around about 30 inches, and there's a few reasons why a lot of players prefer this. Firstly, the short scale length means that the overall size of the bass can be much more compact and lightweight when compared to a full scale bass, so they're much closer to the size of a standard electric guitar, ideal for anyone who finds a bass such as the Fender Jazz or Precision a bit too big and heavy. The shorter scale also results in less tension on the strings, and the frets are closer together, so they're a little easier on the fingers with less stretching, especially for anyone with smaller hands, which is why these are the perfect type of bass for kids to learn on. But don't be fooled by their smaller size, these aren't just basses for children, as a short scale bass also produces a very different tone to a full size bass. That reduced tension on the strings affects the attack, sustain and dynamics, resulting in a very punchy sound with enhanced low end thump, which over the years has been favoured by famous short scale bass players such as Paul McCartney, Jack Bruce, Bill Wyman and more recently Mike Kerr of Royal Blood. So if you are looking for a smaller bass guitar that's still going to pack a punch in the tone department, here's five of our favourite affordable short scale basses that you can try out at your nearest PMT store. So to kick things off, we're going to start with arguably the most popular short scale bass of all time, the Fender Mustang bass. Now, these were originally introduced way back in 1966 as a companion to Fender's budget-friendly Mustang student model electric guitars, but they've since become an iconic bass in their own right. The model we're looking at here is the Squire Classic Vibe Mustang Bass, a great looking, affordable guitar which invokes the spirit of those original vintage models. But if you are looking for a cheap bass for a child to learn on, we definitely also recommend checking out the entry level Squire Affinity Bronco model, one of the best basses for kids at around about the £150 mark. As I said though, this classic Vibe model features many of the original Mustang bass specs. So there's a slim, lightweight body with a bolt on gloss finish maple neck. And this features a Fender C-shaped profile, which is much slimmer than on their full scale basses, making it really easy to wrap your fingers around. This particular model features an Indian laurel fingerboard fitted with 20 narrow tall frets. It's got a standard 9.5 inch radius and a narrow 1.5 inch nut width. So like most Mustang basses, overall it feels really easy to play with quite a loose feel to the strings. That classic punchy Mustang tone comes courtesy of a Fender designed Alnico split coil pickup. Another period authentic features include a vintage style four saddle bridge and vintage style open gear tuners up on that instantly recognizable Fender headstock. And sticking with that 1960s inspired aesthetic, it's available in a couple of retro finishes, including Olympic white and this unbelievably cool looking surf green. Sticking with that kind of vintage vibe, our next pick is the yin to Fender's yang when it comes to short scale basses, and that's the Gibson SG style bass. Now for this list, we've picked the popular Epiphone EBO bass as we wanted to keep things a little more budget friendly. And this one's inspired by the classic Gibson EB3, famously used by Jack Bruce of Cream, who we mentioned earlier. Compared to the warm, punchy tone of the Mustang, this style of bass tends to sound a little grittier and thicker, as they feature a humbucker pickup and a mahogany body, which is a denser wood than those used on the Fender guitars, so they tend to produce a slightly darker sound. Looking at the specs of this particular model, as you can see, it features that legendary SG body shape finished in the classic Gibson Cherry Red. 
And even though it does feel a little heavier than the Mustang, it's still much lighter than most full-scale bases. This one features a marginally longer scale length than the Fender at 30.5 inches, and the neck has a slightly chunkier feeling D shape, but it's still got that narrower 1.5 inch nut width and a slim taper profile, perfect for smaller hands. To keep the cost down, the neck on the EBO is a bolt-on design, as opposed to the more traditional set neck that you'll find on the much more expensive Gibson models, and it does feature just the one Sidewinder humbucking pickup but you still get that resonance from the mahogany body and when combined with the tone control that pickup still offers a surprisingly versatile range of tones especially when you switch in between playing with your fingers or a pick and being a humbucker it's less prone to the buzzing and hum that you get with single coil pickups other authentic features include vintage tuners up on the two side headstock and a three-point vintage bridge which feels really comfortable to rest your palm on when you're playing with a pick so if you do want that classic Gibson short scale SG bass kind of vibe, but without spending Gibson money, there's a good reason why the Epiphone EBO is one of the most popular short scale basses out there. <laughs> pick is much more contemporary looking, offering the playability and tonal options of a more modern bass. And that's the Ibanez GSRM20, a scaled down version of their GSR 180 and 200 series entry level basses. With its lightweight, curvy, contoured poplar body and a super short 28.6 inch scale length, this is the smallest bass that we've got here today. And it's also one of the most affordable, coming in at well under 200 quid. So it really is one of the best options out there if you're looking for a bass guitar for a child. That said, the four bolt satin finished maple neck still features a profile that will feel very playable in the hands of an adult without being too slim. And when combined with the flatter 12 inch radius Jatoba fingerboard and 22 medium frets, you still get that high performance feel and playability of the bigger full scale Ibanez basses. Tonally, it's also quite a bit more versatile than the vintage inspired Mustang and SG basses that we just looked at, as this one features a PJ style pickup configuration. So this means that there's a split coil precision bass style pickup at the neck position and a single coil jazz bass style pickup at the bridge, each with individual volume controls so you can blend the two distinct tones together, making the bass suitable for a huge range of musical styles. Just like Ibanez's other entry level basses, this one features high quality tuners and an Ibanez B10 bridge for rock solid tuning stability and intonation. And they're available in a wide range of gloss or satin finishes to choose from. So as I mentioned earlier, the GSRM20 micro bass is perfect for kids, but due to that incredibly compact size, they're also a great option if you're looking for a travel bass guitar or something for recording in a small bedroom studio. <laughs> Next up, we're looking at a real kind of love it or hate it short scale model that most people will instantly associate with Paul McCartney, and that's the Hofner Violin Bass. Now, Hofner have been making the iconic 500 series basses since the mid 1950s, and they're currently available in a range of different models at various price points. 
but we've chosen to look at the Ignition Series Special Edition, mainly because I've just finished working my way through the marathon that is the Beatles Get Back documentary, and this bass is virtually identical in appearance to the one that Macca uses during their infamous rooftop gig, even down to the Baseman sticker that comes supplied in the box. Whether you're a Beatles fan or not though, the Hofner is definitely the most unique bass that we're looking at here, as it features a hollow body with a spruce top and a flame maple back and sides. This makes the bass really lightweight, one of the main reasons why Paul McCartney has said that he likes using them so much. And it also means that they sound really vibrant and resonant, and acoustically they're also louder than a solid body bass. In terms of playability, despite its 30 inch scale, because of the position of the bridge on the body, they actually feel a little more like a longer medium scale bass. And because of the chunkier feeling neck profile and wider 42 mm nut, they're ideal for players who are used to a full size bass, but are looking for the tone of a short scale. Those tones come courtesy of a pair of Hofner Ignition humbuckers, each with their own individual volume control, and there's some quite unique tonal circuitry with switches to cut the bass and treble, and the option of rhythm or a louder, more prominent solo mode, giving you a wide range of distinctive, warm, but punchy vintage sounding tones to play with. To keep everything as authentic to the originals as possible, other features include a rosewood bridge with a trapeze nickel tailpiece, and up on the headstock, you'll find that classic Hofner script logo and a set of small button open gear tuners. So if you are a Paul McCartney fan, you can't get much more authentic than the Ignition series bass at this kind of price point. But even if you're not really into the Beatles, the Hofner violin bass is definitely something that every bass player should at least try, as they offer a tone and a feel completely different to pretty much any other bass out there. So the final guitar that we're checking out today is the Gretsch Electromatic Junior Jet 2, a short scale bass that's capable of delivering some truly monstrous tones, as proven by Mike Kerr of Royal Blood, who's often been seen playing one of these on stages all over the world. The design is based on the famous Gretsch Duo and Projet electric guitars, so it's got a classic single cutaway body design and is fitted with a pair of Gretsch mini humbuckers, which offer a pretty hot output with quite an aggressive growly tone. Running through the rest of the specs, this one's got a scale length of 30.3 inches and features a basswood body with a bolt-on maple neck. The neck has a slightly wider but flatter, slimmer feeling profile compared to the narrower but more rounded necks on the Mustang and Hofner bases that we've looked at, which along with the 12 inch radius walnut fingerboard and 20 medium jumbo frets make the Gretsch feel really easy and fast to play. Hardware includes a set of closed back die cast tuners and a simple but solid four saddle bridge, so the bass holds its tuning really well, even during aggressive playing or after crazy string bending. To add a subtle touch of class, there's chrome Gretsch GRO style control knobs and a simple pick guard with the Gretsch logo. And the pickups run through a three-way Les Paul style switch with single volume and tone controls, offering a good range of sounds and allowing you to flick between pickup options really quickly. So all in all, the Gretsch Junior Jet is a pretty understated, but very cool looking short scale bass that really packs that tonal punch. And it's definitely worth giving one a try. Thank you. 
thanks for watching. That was five of our favourite short scale basses that you can try out at your nearest professional music technology store. For more information on anything that we've looked at here, visit pmtonline.co.uk and you can keep up to date with all the latest news and deals by following us on all the usual social channels at PMT House of Rock. If you found this video helpful, please do give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Let me know your favourite short scale bass in the comments and I'll see you in the next video.